Hello, welcome to this session on Robot Framework, a framework that stands out. I'm Abhinav Shikhar, Consulting Engineer at Cisco. I have four plus years of experience in automating and validating network protocols and solutions. I'm an inclusion and diversity advocate, and I co-lead the Pride DRO at Cisco India. So moving on, what are we going to learn today? We will start with learning uh, what Robot Framework is, and then move on to understanding more about its features and what the industry has been using it for probably in the last decade or so. From there, we will learn more about um, how a typical robot script looks like, and then take a look at sample scripts with regards to network automation, and finally understand more about the logs and the reports that a robot framework generates. So now let's take a step back and see where do we stand today with respect to network automation or automation in general, right? Mm -hmm. And here on the screen, you see the sentiment shared by a lot of engineers across the world. And most of these engineers are network engineers who are automating networks for, for their customers or for their organizations at this point. And the kind of experience that they have had essentially speaks that the journey from, get, from being network engineer to being a software network programmer has been challenging. And the reason behind that is the whole process of sophistication comes with a lot of issues around portability and a lot of ramp up time that people typically need to transition. And the intent behind coming with a framework like Robot Framework was to ease that. And if we now visit Robot Framework and we understand what different it offers, the very first thing about robot framework is that it's keyword driven. And what I mean by that is that it just uses very plain English statements, not something sophisticated like Python or Java or, or anything. The very important point here is that robot framework is open source as opposed to a lot of other frameworks, which makes it really easy for people to collaborate, for people to get insights into, for people to understand how things work. Right, and uh, talking about the ease of uh, use, the ease of uh, readability, uh, robot framework definitely stands out there as well. And the most important point that most of the engineers struggle with is that this script work on a particular platform but fail on the other. Right, what different it offers is that all the scripts that we write are actually not just modular but also independent on different kinds of platforms and across different kinds of operating systems. So now let's go back and just look at what is the definition, right? And it it essentially stitches what we just talked about. Robot Framework is a keyword-driven open source test automation framework, which is extensively used for two different things, right? And the first one is acceptance testing. And when I say acceptance testing, what I mean is that whenever we, you know, we have a system or whenever we plan on designing a system, we got to measure what are the different capabilities. We got to evaluate these capabilities. And these capabilities are again uh, evaluated against the needs and requirements, right? So that is what is acceptance testing. And uh, the other one is acceptance test driven development. And what this means is that, uh, you know, a methodology in which the testing goes hand in hand with uh, implementation of the functionality, not something very conventional or traditional where implementation is done and then the testing starts, right? So essentially used in acceptance testing and acceptance test dri driven development, but then a lot of other places in the ecosystem as well. Right. So um, again, we would be interested to know more about the features. And uh, like I said, right, the ease of usability and the reusability, more importantly, right? Because, you know, when you have things like keywords and, you know, something that's very simple, you can actually use it across multiple scripts, across multiple customers, across multiple platforms. And that brings down your development time, your validation time by quite an extent, right? What's very interesting here is that Robot Framework generates the, its reports and logs in HTML format, as opposed to other, other frameworks, which have, most of them have things like XML, which is not readable. And uh, when we talk about HTML, it's, it's just so human readable, and that's definitely a plus point. The modular architecture definitely makes it uh, very exceptional. And uh, this particular framework was developed at Nokia Networks initially many years ago, but it has been used across the industry lately, right? So um, and now that we know it has got a lot to offer, 
let's understand what are the different applications that industries have been using it for, right? The spectrum uh, of uh, application has been huge, right? So there are things around web development, UI testing, things like system testing, running processes, operating system related stuff, robotic process automation, and then finally the network automation, what we want to talk about today. It's a good time for us to also understand that, you know, how do we install this particular framework on our local machine? So it's a four-step process, and only the first two are mandatory. The third and fourth are optional ones, so it's a fairly simple process. This is in respect to Python, so this particular framework works on top of Python. So the very first step is to download and install Python. That's the very, very first prerequisite. And once you have that, you are good to actually install robot framework, which is just one command, pip install robot framework. Now, depending on what functionality you want to use this particular framework for, you might want to sometimes install external libraries, things like, let's say, SSH library or Telnet library or database, etc. If you have that requirement, you can always go and uh, install those libraries. Otherwise, you are good with basic libraries, the built-in libraries. And the fourth one, again, this is the optional one. If you prefer to use code editor, then you could go and install a particular code editor. And then there are multiple code editors that um, Robot Framework supports, from PyCharm to Sublime, Eclipse, Atom, and whatnot. Let's spend some time to understand what the architecture of Robot Framework looks like, right? And uh, as you see on the screen, at the top, you see data, right? And when you talk about the networking context, what data essentially means logs that are generated by your devices, which could be your servers, switches, firewalls, routers, and whatnot, right? And when I say data, right, these could be things like configurations, outputs, etc. So what Robot Framework does is, is that it consumes the, the data that these devices produce and uses, leverages its libraries and tools to test whether the functionalities, whether the protocols are running intact or not. So uh, when I talk about libraries, right, uh, there are two broad categories of libraries, as you see on the right of your screen. Uh, the first one is built-in libraries. Uh, these are libraries that are implicit. You do not really need to source these in your scripts. They will come by default. And the second one, external libraries. So depending on what kind of application you need the framework for, things like, let's say, SSH or database or Selenium, if you are keen on using those, you might want to install external libraries as well. Now, once we have the data and we have the framework that can actually, you know, take the data and uh, do testing by leveraging its libraries and tools, what it leads us, right, is a target system, a, a system that we either want to build or a system that we want to improve. Now, looking at uh, what are the general sections of any uh, a robot framework script, right? So there are four very important sections. The first one is settings. And like any other programming language, at the top, we have, you know, this section where we mention what are the different kinds of libraries that we want to source. Because going forward, we might be using things like functions or we might use some variables which could be present in a different file altogether. So settings is where we source the built-in libraries or the user-defined libraries. The second one are variables, and this is the section where we initialize and declare and define the variables that we plan on using throughout the script. We can also initialize or assign some of the environment variables. Then we have got something called test cases, and that is actually the core of all of this. Test cases section is where we actually write you know, the pass-fail criteria. We actually write what needs to be done, right? So we will, just in a moment, we will look at the script and understand more about what essentially comes under test cases. And finally, we have got something called as keywords, and keywords correspond to what is called as functions in any other programming language. So keywords basically developed and designed to ensure that a particular functionality is achieved. Now, to give an example, let's say you want to start traffic or stop traffic, you can create a keyword, and within that keyword, you can have your own set of uh, lines of code, which would help you achieve that functionality. And then you can use those keywords in the test cases section. So um, let, let us now look at uh, just very basic test cases. And just to give an idea, right here towards the left, we have a test case for a valid login. 
So let's say if I think out loud about how I would go about validating if a login is working fine or not, the very first step would be that I go to a particular page where I want to log in, then enter my username and then the credentials, and then probably hit submit or login and finally expect for a welcome page. Now, what if I said that with Robot Framework, that is the script, right? It's it's not something that requires you to use REST APIs or things like a bit of web development or, or anything that's sophisticated. It's just plain English. Most of these keywords are already built because the, the framework is open source and millions of people across the world use it on a daily basis. So you can all, you can just go back. You, I mean, all you need to know is what keyword is to be used, right? And which particular library does the keyword belong to? Similarly, if you look towards the right, you will find another test case that is to search for Cisco on Google, right? So again, the manual approach would be to open browser, go to google.com, input Cisco, and then click on Google search. And that essentially is the robot um, script for the same. So having seen these two very basic ones, uh, let's now move on to understanding more about uh, how robot can be used to automate network functionalities. So here, as you see, under settings, I have got user-defined libraries, like I said, three different libraries corresponding to different kinds of functionalities that I want to achieve. And then uh, the next one is variable section, where I've got two different variables, one for the device name and the second for the device under test image. Then under test cases, I've got a couple of them. The first one is to connect to device and verify image. Now, what I'm doing there is connecting to device. So again, that's a keyword. It's very generic. I say connect to device, followed by that, I give the device name. So this keyword will actually connect me to the device. And before that, I've also done load test bed, right? So that would essentially take care of what is the IP address of the device? What kind of connection am I planning on using? Is it SSH or Telnet? So testbed file is another file that we create and then we push content, uh, uh, connectivity related content to that. And, uh, and then the third one is verify the image under test. Now that is actually a keyword and it's a user defined keyword, which you can see at the bottom of uh, the script under the keyword section, the verify, verify the image under test. It, all it does is it runs show version on a particular duty, and then it checks if the output contains whatever I expect, right? And here I'm expecting it to contain 17.3.1a. If it does not, then it fails there. If it does, then it moves on to the next test case. Now, the next test case is a little different from the one we just talked about, the testing auto tunnel functionality. It also gives you a glimpse of how you can actually run a particular command, how you can configure and then verify, right? So there are these very generic commands like show VXLAN route profile name test. And then in order to configure, what we can always do is run confd to go to config mode and then push the configurations that we desire. And then whenever required, we can actually use things like output contains or output does not contain. Again, um, the syntax is fairly simple. The keyword names are very relevant, are very understandable. So when we say output contains, it means that we are expecting whatever comes after output contains to be present in the output that just came before. So what I mean is when, it's, when we did something like run DSCP1, whatever output it gave, whether that output contains DSCP cannot modify it or not. Right. The same uh, holds true for the next set as well, uh, by which I mean DSCP zero. So just to summarize this, when we look at this from a network automation lens, um, it's, it's not very different from something like a web development. The sections remain the same. The kind of keywords that we use, the kind of libraries that we, we source are different for sure. Now that we know that, OK, this is how a particular script looks like, what do we get out of that script, right? Let's say we run, do we get a report? While there are different kind of reports that uh, the framework generates, what we're gonna look at now are the ones which are the most important and most often looked at. First one is report.html. And as you see here, it's just a very higher level summary of what your start time was, end time, how much time it actually took for the script to run, what are the total number of tests, how many tests failed, how many tests passed, and so on. This is good to get an idea. This is good if your test case passed, you might not really want to go and look at every step and troubleshoot. But then, you know, when you land into a circumstance where you actually have a script that failed, you might want to get, you know, into, into a deeper understanding of 
where exactly did things go wrong? What exactly broke down? And that's when you go to something called as log.html and uh, you're on the screen towards your right, as you see, you'll see two colors, green and red. The ones in green are the keywords that passed. So we said a run, show, VXLAN, route profile, name, test, and that worked. So the command ran and there was no problem. So it was successful. But the couple of red ones, and uh, these are again for verification of output contains. So both of them are output contains. Right, so what happened here is that we were expecting the parameter that is DSCP cannot be modified or reserved world one cannot be modified in the second one to be present. However, what happened is that it was not present, these contents were not present in the output, which is why it failed, right? So what we then do is we go back and check what went wrong and then rerun the same script. Now, um, just a couple of additional features. Uh, the first one, collection of test cases. The advantage that it comes with is that if you've got like a bunch of test cases to run, you don't really have to run them one-on-one. -on -one. You can just create a batch, you can create a suite, and then run the suite all together. So it saves a lot of time, it saves a lot of effort and energy. The second one is set up and tear down. And this is very important from a best practices point of view, because when we write scripts, it's very much recommended to have things like uh, connecting to device, connecting to traffic generator, activating traffic stream, or maybe verifying if the traffic is flowing, all of these things before the actual validation starts, right? Let's say I want to validate something about BGP, right? I would want to connect to the device, maybe set up BGP traffic and everything prior to the actual place where I start testing that particular feature. So setup section is a dedicated section that would run before every test case. So, you know, no matter how many test cases you have, the first one to run will always be set up. And once that is done, it will then move on to the next test cases in sequence. Likewise, the teardown is the last one to run. And what happens in teardown is that anything that you want to do after, right, or rather at the end of execution. So things like disconnecting from device so that you don't really leave any connection hanging or uh, stopping your traffic, clearing counters, clearing logs and all of that, right? What's interesting here is that robot does, does not only offer uh, the setup and tear down at the test case level, but also at the test suite level. So you can have, you know, bigger setup and then a bigger tear down that's like applicable to the whole suite. And finally, the tagging mechanism, which Robot Framework offers is quite uh, helpful because it helps us tag particular test cases depending on functionality. So just to give an example, if you have got things like BGP, NAT, EIGRP, or let's say LLDP or any other protocol, right? You might want to segregate them and what better than tags to help you segregate, right? So you can always make use of these tags to ensure that uh, your test cases are well in place. Now, just to sum up, um, what we talked about today were the basics of robot framework, uh, how automation looks like today and how robot framework is different. And then we learned about the installation, which was again, a fairly simple process. We also did look at um, a few scripts, a few generic ones, and then one which was uh, more around network automation. And then how keywords like output contains or output does not contain can be used to verify. I've also got a few re resources for you to uh, go back and revisit. These are quite insightful and uh, helpful. You will find a lot of information listed on these, so please make some time to uh, check them out. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me through mail or ping me on WebEx Teams. Thank you.